Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing this evening? This is Eve with The Baby's Booty. And we are coming to you live tonight with not a lot of content. <laughs> tonight, we're going to like scale back a little bit, chill out just a little bit, and uh, see if we can't cover a simpler topic as well as something a little bit more complicated for those of you who have been with this channel a very long time so uh the first thing i want to let you know is here at the baby's booty what we do is we uh love our crafting generally it's embroidery we also do some bling some vinyl some sublimation whatever the notion hits us that's what we're going to talk about um sometimes it's equipment sometimes it's techniques and sometimes it's supplies and tonight we're actually going to touch a little bit on some supplies because i ran into a personal problem and i thought it'd be good to share that information with you all because i'm sure it will come up at some point in time for those of you who do embroidery if you do sublimation or bling or vinyl then we'll get into your subjects as time moves along but tonight we're going to be touching on embroidery also if you have received some new equipment recently please let me know because what we do around here is celebrate with you and we ring the bell the purple bell so please let me know if you've gotten a new baby within the last week or so so that we can celebrate with you um and ring that baby right on into the family uh, because all of our equipment is equally as important to each one of us. Also on this channel, what I tend to do in the very beginning of our show is say hello to each and every one of you. Well, not each and every one of you, but as many of you as I can <laughs> in the first 10 minutes of the show, 10 to 15 minutes or so, um, I like to say hi and welcome you to the channel because without you all tuning in every week, I wouldn't have a channel for you to come look at. So I don't mind doing that so if you you know kind of aren't the one to sit around and listen to chit chat and chatter then you know give us about 10 15 minutes and then check right back in with us if you don't mind please so uh, i am going to switch over to the chat now and say hello to those who have come in first and foremost this morning i see inspiration creations first and first at the top of the list lori from canada saying hi hi lori how are you welcome thank you for joining us this evening and so crafty who is a youtube hoop group member thank you very much for being a youtube hoop group member is saying hi eve and all hello to you as well thank you for joining us and sheila cushionberry hi sheila cushionberry <laughs> she says hello sorry I missed your live session was on your way out of state oh no i am so sorry to hear that um, I'm glad that you made it back home safely and please give your condolences to the family for me. Uh, there's a lot of folks, unfortunately, that are uh, losing uh, loved ones. Hopefully it wasn't from the virus, but uh, I am very sorry to hear that and glad as always to have you in here with us. Glenn F. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Always a pleasure to have you, Miss Phenomenal Creations. You as well. Always a pleasure and hello to you as well. Tracy, hey Miss Tracy from Albany, Georgia. Welcome, ready to learn <laughs> what well, we're going to be teaching tonight. Miss Ross, hello, how are you? Welcome, thank you very much for being a YouTube Hoop Group member, and thank you for your order as well. And I will be working on that tomorrow. Miss Pearl Lucas, hello, how are you? She says hi, Eve and everyone, and hopefully your package came. Cause I did send it out. Miss Karen Davis. Hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And Nancy Faust from Iowa. Hello. Always a pleasure to have you in here with us. We have three, four, sorry, YouTube Who Group members joining us in this list. Dexter Wilson, Jackie Hicks, Leela Nelson, and Patricia Husky. Thank you to the four of you for being YouTube Who Group members. I definitely, definitely appreciate that. Thank you very much for your support of the channel. You gotta be kidding. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Marianne Reddick, welcome. Tanya Powell, hello, how are you? Welcome. Miss D Purple One, Diana says hello from Chicago. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. 
Um, let's see what we have. Michelle Anderson from South Carolina. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And Eartha Lewis from Port Allen, Louisiana. Welcome <laughs> to you as well. Mama 12. Howdy, howdy, Eve. How are you doing this evening? By the way, just wanted to tell you I found a face mask for the 4x4 hoop. So happy now I can make masks. Cool beans. Please, if you don't mind, send me a link to that so that I can pass it on to the YouTube hoop group. Well, not the YouTube hoop group, but the YouTube form. The Hoop Group forums on the website so that I can put it on the website so <laughs> all the others with the 4x4 hoop can enjoy that. And I would like to see it myself. And who knows, it might be something fun to do a video on. Boontilla, hello, how are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And Miss Ethel Smith and Miss Debbie Kidd is here. And you too as well are YouTube Hoop Group members and I definitely appreciate that. Thank you so very much. I want to... Uh, show my appreciation for your support of this channel as well Lori campbell uh welcome how are you thank you for joining us and suzanne go grand go from central florida hey love how are you and how's your new baby your machine doing have you been uh stitching up a, a whole mess with your machine your multi-needle <laughs> i've been meaning to catch up with you and find out miss 143 hello hello you made it welcome thank you for joining us this evening Jessica Padilla, hello, how are you from Puerto Rico? Welcome. Scooby-Doo, hi Scooby-Doo, how are you? Welcome. <laughs> PJ Coppage says my daughter turned 17 today. Oh my gosh, so that means you're old, like me, <laughs> but is here watching the Hoop Group and Crew. She says hello. Well, hello, how are you, baby girl? And congratulations on hitting 17. It's only uh, one more step and then... I think, what is it, you guys? Like, 21 is a big milestone, and after that, it's, like, downhill. <laughs> At least that's what I told my daughter. Oh, my gosh, it's crazy, because I'm, like, I don't remember much after 21. I really don't, because it was, like, yay, 21, and then it's, like, okay, now what? <laughs> so, you know, that's crazy. Shirley Stewart says, hi, Shirley from Pinellas park florida got a cricket maker and a heat press machine last week well congratulations on your cricket maker and your heat press machine have you been cricket making and heat pressing let's hope so but meanwhile we're going to celebrate with you and ring the bell <laughs> congratulations <laughs> congratulations on your new babies i hope you have a lot of fun with your machine and your equipment um, there's a whole lot more you can get involved with. So definitely check out the channel, especially with the rhinestones. You can do rhinestones with your cricket. Lupe. Hi, Lupe. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Sheila says, yeah, see, and that's the thing with this hospital thing. I have a friend that's in the hospital as well and nobody can go in there. It is the saddest situation I have ever seen in my life. And it's scary, you know, especially for the folks that's in there. So um, definitely want to pass along well wishes to you and your family and condolences as well for your loss, for sure. Boonchila is saying, hello, how are you, Boonchila? And um, Treasure Design says, hello, from Columbus, Georgia. Welcome. Joyce Rickett says, hello, from the British, British Virgin Islands. Welcome, Joyce. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for joining us this evening. Teresa Jackson says, hello, Hoop Group. Hello, Eve. Hello, Teresa. How are you? Uh, Shonda Coleman says, hello, Christina Darke, I believe. Last name is pronounced Dark. Oh, thank you. You know I you know I be butchering stuff over here. <laughs> so thank you for letting me know that. And hello, Christina Dark. It's beautiful. Um, Davida says, hope everyone is being safe. And she says, hello from Maryland. We are trying our diligence best to be safe. That's for certain. Christina says she's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Gold Mind says the mask link. If you're talking about for the four by four, that would be phenomenal. Um, Mom of 12, if you would like to post the link in here, you are more than welcome to. And I'll make sure that that gets posted. Mary Stowell, hello, and thank you for being a YouTube Who Group member. I appreciate that. And Kimberly Armstrong is here from Montana. Welcome. Thank you for joining us from Montana. Pearl Lucas says, I received my package and been watching your videos on Bling. Very good. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, Mama 12, thank you. I'll do that. Um, Gold Mine says, I just brought a brother in of his 4000D, 50th Disney edition. Know anything about it? 
Um, I do not, and yet I do. So usually a lot of the machines are the same. They just come with different features, like yours comes with the Disney designs on it. Now, the thing is, there are so many different versions of the same machine. Not sure if it's the 4x4 uh, version of the machine, or is it the 5x7 version of the machine? Is it the dream machine version of the machine? I'm not sure. But either way, if you let me know what the largest size it is that we that you can embroider with that machine, then we can go into it a little bit more because most of the machines are all the same. Um, as I mentioned, it's just the different model numbers and the features that come with it. But for the most part, they're all the same. Denise Simpson says, just got your brother Stellaire XJ1 has had it for three days. So congratulations, Denise Simpson. And also gold mine, actually. We need to ring it for you first because that uh, brother Innovis machine is new to you. <laughs> congratulations. And Denise, yes. Congratulations on your brother. <laughs> Stellaire is nice. Welcome to your machine and your machine as well. So you guys, if you're new to embroidery, we do have a forum uh, on my website, the babiesbooty.com, and that's listed right here uh, at the bottom of my screen. And at the babiesbooty.com, you can click join membership up at the top. There's an arrow pointing up there. If you're on a desktop, if you're on a mobile device, there's three lines for the menu. Just click that and click uh, membership or hoop group, and that should get you in to enroll into the YouTube, not the YouTube hoop group. I keep saying YouTube hoop group because <laughs> that rolls off the tongue, but the baby's booty hoop group, which is on the website. On that website, you can actually post pictures of the products that you're working on, projects that you're dealing with, problems you may be having. You can ask questions um, and you can interact with each other. And you guys have been really busy the last couple of weeks on the forums and I really appreciate it. It looks fantastic. I love to see the interactions and the positive feedback for each other. We definitely wanna keep things positive in there. Uh, we don't post, which I have a, a posting that lets you know what's allowed and what's not. Uh, but for the most part, everybody everybody does really great in there and I definitely appreciate that. We want positive vibes only, right? <laughs> so we wanna keep everything really cool um now if you are new here as well you also and thank you to let's see who do we have as a new member of the youtube who group uh pasha 6s welcome thank you for being a youtube hoop group member so there is a join button if you would like to join our channel as a youtube hoop group member and it has three different levels that you can join to help support the channel and each one comes with their own perks and it's listed with each each level. Uh, but definitely check it out. We're here, there's no strings attached. Whenever you would like to cancel, you can cancel. No pressure whatsoever, but we definitely do appreciate any support that you give to this channel. So thank you very much in advance. Um, let us see. Boom Chilla says, I'm so happy to be a member. <laughs> I'm happy that you're a member too. Welcome. Thank you. And Jane, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. And Grant and Favor is in here. Um, PJ Copy says, I'm in fabulous company with all of you. Thank you. Yes, yes, we agree. We agree. <laughs> uh, Kimberly Craig says, happy Sunday. Carmen Alvarado says, hello from Cali. Christina Dark says, can't wait to get my heat press and cricket when stimulus check finally comes. I know a lot of people are investing in their businesses with that money. Cindy Lou, hello, my love. How are you? Welcome. Um, Boom Chilla says she's getting her sewing machine, the Baby Lock Soprano. I'm glad you're getting one. A lot of folks are looking for sewing machines and can't find them. Maria, hello. How are you from Grovetown, Georgia? Thank you for joining us this evening. Sheila received the cork sheets. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Grant and Favor says it's Yvonne from Yvonne from Wilmington. Hello, Yvonne. How are you? Got lots of friends in Wilmington. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've been there. It's time to go back. <laughs> Monica Torres says hello from Arizona. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, here's the link for the face mask for the 4x4. Uh, 
Let me see if I can pull it up. I don't see it, but as soon as it pops up, then I'll definitely do that. And I'm also going to check uh, the Facebook that you sent over. Um, Jessica says, I forgot to say I got my first Epson sublimation printer today, model 3720. Well, congratulations. Sublimation is totally awesome. I've been doing a lot of that today sublimating and i'm tired of so <laughs> but congratulations yes congratulations that sublimation is a lot of fun it's a lot a lot a lot of fun i love sublimating you can have some really beautiful um things that you can make like for instance i have a uh cousin that is a huge fan of the cowboys and come to find out she has like this huge crush on Dak Prescott I don't know who he is but him's not bad looking at all and so I made her a mask with his picture on it uh so this is going to her she wanted uh his picture so I'm just making this for her and I thought it would be cute and I have one more mask to make um and I thought I would have it ready for you guys to see, but I don't have it ready with my long time love on it, but I didn't get to make it. So I'll have to show you guys that in the uh, YouTube, no, in the, <laughs> in the hoop group, the regular hoop group. I'll have to show you guys the picture. Um, let us see, let us see, let us see. So you guys, how do you become a hoop group member? I just started embroidery, Shirley. Um, so if you go to thebabiesbooty.com and click join the hoop group up at the very top or um like i mentioned if you have a mobile device just click the three lines and the three lines will drop down the menu and click on hoop group and that will get you in um and also if you're requesting or inquiring about being a youtube hoop group member then you definitely can um look towards the bottom where subscribe button is right beside it should be a blue join button um, if not, there's a link in the description below that you can click and take you directly to the membership page. So it's really cool um, to have everyone on board. So, um, and Debbie Kid got a Juki sewing machine. Juki! <laughs> Congratulations! Woo! That's an industrial baby. <laughs> I have a friend that uh, we were looking at a Juki. She ended up with a tech so she didn't get a juki but we looked at those jukis those are nice sewing machines but that was years and years ago um monica says i just got a pe 770 this week and didn't like the screen oh no uh, yeah the 770 is the older model um and it is it has the black and white i guess basically screen they do have the newer color one uh in the 800 but it's still is a very good embroidery machine a very very good embroidery machine you do have the five by seven hoop um which gives you a lot more space than the four by four it may not seem like it but it really does um and even if you got the repositional hoop that's available for that machine it even stretches you out to five by right at 12 um a little more than 12 if i'm not mistaken so definitely um it's not posting for some reason okay i'll definitely check that mom of 12 but the uh 770 is a really good embroidery machine for a single needle definitely so you didn't go wrong even though the screen may not be the best so let me see if i can't pull up oh here we go and get you guys that link so that you can, oh, here we go. Thank you. I appreciate that. And let me go ahead and I'm gonna post it right here. Ooh, that's a big link. I don't know that that's gonna work. No, nope, that's too long of a link. So I'll shorten it and have to put it in here in a little bit, okay? Um, Let's see, so I'm, not going let's stop right here it's too many minutes in and i want to make sure that we catch hold to questions 
Yeah, the Jukies are nice. Would trade my baby lot today for a Juki? <laughs> um, what's the difference between Juki and Bernina besides price? Um, well, Juki's been around a very, 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 very long time. Industrial quality equipment. Um, Bernina, what fabric did you use for your sublimation mask? Polyester. Polyester. Oh, thank y'all. I just realized that I was that far back in chat. Oh, man, Karen Davis, I hope you continue to heal. You can't figure out how to use the easy frames for the Janome MB7. They have easy frames for that? I didn't know that they did. Um, but, which easy frames... Are they the magnet ones? If they're the magnet ones, then we'll have to um, go over that. It's been a while since I've touched my magnet frames. The best material and or tips for doing patches, Miss Phenomenal Creation says, um, if we join the YouTube hoop group now, will we have access to prior hoop group projects and the hoop face masks, etc.? If you join the hoop group now, you will have access to the videos, but the files um like each project came with a design like um, we did the little purses and those were mailed out for that month um emailed out for that month so if you join today then it would end up being the one for may the end of may um kimberly armstrong to answer that question Where did it go material for patches um so there is a website you can go to uh twillusa.com and they sell twill that you can embroider on um specifically for patches so that is a great place to go and get fabric for patches aussie witch says just got out of the hospital on oxygen last week in there because of blood clots in the lung as well as pneumonia and lung infection oh my god i am so glad that you are on the mend and very happy that you were able to make it home and um hope that wasn't the virus either because most people have clots and pneumonia with the virus so um I am very glad to hear that you are on the mend. Ellie Scraper says, with all this money that the government gave out, I can't purchase the brother <laughs> and brother machine because it's been sold out. Yes, it has been. It has been. And that's why I was mentioning a lot of folks are like really jumping on this crafting bandwagon. Some people are jumping on it um, to make the masks and get out there and sell them. But a lot of folks were already in there and they were eager to have an opportunity to be able to upgrade their equipment and do you know get something bigger and yeah it it really took the crafting supply um manufacturing area by storm they weren't expecting this at all and the very things that should be simple like for instance going to walmart and getting a fat quarter you know, I have been to, I want to say seven different Walmarts throughout North Carolina and every last one of them, all fat quarters are gone. The little folded squares that normally are right there as soon as you walk into the craft section, all of them are gone. I mean, wiped completely clean and forget trying to find fancy fabric like superhero fabric or um you know any of the novelty fabrics they're all gone every last one of them and it's amazing to me to see that and it kind of exciting you know a little bit but um and then like for instance the hobby lobby in a sister city near me has been closed 
I think they closed a couple of weeks because you know Hobby Lobby stayed open even though the government said everybody needed to shut down but then a couple of weeks in Hobby Lobby was like okay you know what we'll go ahead and shut down and so that particular store closed so I knew that they closed with certain fabrics because I was there you know like a day or two before they closed and then they've been closed and i think what's today today is sunday so i want to say yesterday we drove past and it was open and i was like i want to go so bad oh i want to go in there because i know they have certain fabrics but then i thought about it by the time i drove past it was like noon so i know all of that fabric was probably gone by then if folks didn't bum rush the place and fight over it hopefully there was no issues but yeah and when people go in and they're buying what i found like when I went and to a whole another Hobby Lobby almost an hour away, not Hobby Lobby. Um, no, it was Hobby Lobby, about an hour away. And the black fabric, you can't find black fabric. Now that is crazy to me. Like colors, all kind of colors are still kind of sort of available. Black is gone. You cannot find it. So at any rate, um, when I went to that Hobby Lobby, this one just so happened to have a black cotton fabric. And I forget the name of what she called it. It wasn't like your typical black um, quilting cotton. It was a different cotton. And she was like, oh, we have some of that and it's over there. And she pointed where it was. So I went over there to find it and I didn't see it. And I happened to look up and there was this other lady like across the way and she had that fabric like this under her arm walking around with it and I was like is that the fabric you're talking about when I got back to the cutting desk and the cutting desk lady was like yeah that's that's it that's the black fabric right there and I was like oh man that sucks and so the lady came up to the cutting counter she was like oh are you looking for this fabric too and I was like well I mean you know I don't know how much are you getting you know if you if there's any left then I guess I can get it or whatever but she was like oh I'm only getting three yards and I was like yes I, I'll take whatever's left there's no issue but then there was another lady behind us and she was watching and I, I, did, I didn't put two and two together I should have but she was wanting black fabric too and I had picked up a different black fabric that wasn't the same it was like um I wanted black but the fabric I had picked up was like a little bit lighter than black. I didn't like that at all. Um, but that lady ended up getting that fabric and she bought the whole bolt of it. So it's like, you know, when they're going in to buy, usually they're buying every bit of it. And then that's nothing left for anybody else. So um, I've, I've been trying to come up with a catchy name for this thing, mask getting or whatever i don't even know what to call it but this has been like the most interesting thing i've ever seen <laughs> in the crafting community and how folks are just like everybody is like okay i'm jumping on the bandwagon because as i've mentioned my dad is even making masks now and on the sewing machine not the embroidery machine but he's doing a phenomenal job and he has been doing really well with his mask so you know it's interesting to see it and i'm actually um pleasantly surprised because i'm very proud of our community uh, whether you're selling whether you're giving them away it doesn't matter honestly that's not my business uh which i had to find that out the hard way it's not my business what you're doing with them but it is awesome to see the crafting community being able to rise to the occasion um and get I mean, we're selling, we've bought up every, everything just about the fabric, the sewing machines, the cutter. You can't find a rolly cutter on the shelf anywhere. Matter of fact, I did find one when I went to that Hobby Lobby, like I said, an hour away and it broke on me. Same day I bought it. I was so upset. But, and you know, that's how it goes. But anyway, sorry, I'm on the soapbox and talking about stuff and it is, has nothing to do with any of what we were supposed to be talking about. Margo, hello. Special thanks to you, E, for taking time out each week to give us information. You're welcome. That's what I love to do. So thank you very much. Joy T. Trey, hello. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Justin is here. Hello. How are you? Thank you for joining us this evening. 
Um, so tonight, what I want to go into is a couple of things because there's quite a few. <laughs> no black fabric is worse than no toilet paper. You're not kidding. That is definitely the truth. Mask mania. Mask mania. Tree C, you named it. I love that. So mask mania to 2020. Mask mania 2020. We love it. We love it. We love it. We love it. So definitely, I'm waiting for my black fabric order from Hobby Lobby. I, woo, I hope you get it. I hope you get it. Uh, Lorna Putt says she uses Metro Thread. So the reason why um, I wanted to get into the thread is because I think I remember you saying when you personalize a mask that it kind of shredded or pulled away. I had the same problem. I was told to use a ballpoint embroidery needle i did not because the fabric that i was embroidering on at the time and they were absolutely correct i'm more than positive because it was causing a run in the fabric but that fabric that i was using was a stretchy polyester definitely not what i wanted um because i did not want stretchy fabric so i ended up finding some um polyester that doesn't stretch so like this this polyester doesn't stretch but it sublimates absolutely beautifully um you know so this one doesn't have that issue with the needle puncturing as you can see um here's another one i just took off of the embroidery machine and there are no runs at all in this particular mask i made her two I found two cute pictures of of this dude and I was like, okay, yeah, we'll go with that. So I'm gonna make that for her. But yeah, no runs in this one. So find a polyester that doesn't have stretch and you should be okay. And it, it will. Hey, Isora, how are you? Joanne's is really starting to make you mad. Oh no, don't let him make you mad. It was causing a run, but it was cotton. Huh. Um... It might have been a pretty thin cotton, but try doing, um, if you can find it, Latasha, I'm going to warn you about that now. Oh, thank you for being a YouTube Who group member. Uh, but I'm going to warn you about that now. If you can find it, use, um, fusible, like, interfacing. Use a fusible interfacing on the back before you stitch it. And that should help. Because that's what's, what's been helping with with these not because of um runs this fabric doesn't run but this fabric fabric frays very badly it really does so i put the fusible interfacing on the back and that stops the runs from the fabric but as you can see it not runs it shreds it frays sorry so the fusible interfacing stops the fraying so you can give that a shot. Hi, Anita Peoples. How are you? Um, Don't mess with my Bernina, y'all. Laughing out loud. I actually have eight machines now. Finding white thread. That's another one. That is the craziest thing ever. Now finding white thread. That's another story. Thank goodness for fabric on hand because Joanne canceled two big orders of my own. No, uh, I'm sorry. Another place to check for fabric, Boonchilla said, is Etsy, and that's true, but I found that they, like, drastically marked up the price on Etsy, so. Uh, twill is a polyester, yes, and it does sublimate beautifully. Now, the twill I have is pretty thick, so that's why I don't use the twill. Um, heat and bond light should work. It should work, yes. Oh, and you're welcome, Beverly Smith. So the reason why we're talking about the thread tonight is because I had an order to do and in this order it was 12 hats. All right, so I have a 12 hat order here. Um and as you can tell by the colors, obviously um it's something where they needed high vis. Um and so this is a lawn care company and he wanted hats to go with his high vis vests or the safety vests that I sublimated his logo on and he wanted his logo embroidered on the hats right so without really now I've done his order before 12 hats before and it was a few weeks ago but I forgot 
the problem that I had the last time. So this time the problem came up again. And fortunately I did the orange hats first, okay? So I embroidered the orange hats and these are structured hats, which the red line is an amazing machine for structured caps. I don't have nearly, hardly any problems with the red line doing hats, structured hats. Whereas my six needle is very picky and it will not touch a structured cap at all. Um, and in the manual, it actually says no to the structured cap. So I probably should have paid that some attention, but I did. But at any rate, um, so I did the orange hats and they turned out really great. Very few problems, if any. Okay. But then when I got to the yellow hats, um, this thread that I had, I bought a set of fluorescent threads from Madeira, who usually is my go-to for threads but since the pandemic and they shut it down and won't let me pick up my stuff I kind of like kicked them to the curb and so I uh, which is unfortunate because the yellow fluorescent that I had from Madeira was the wrong shade it didn't match his hats perfectly but I found a fluorescent that I had purchased long before fooling with Madeira, I purchased from Amazon, right? And the Amazon thread matched it absolutely perfectly. As you can see, it's a no-name brand polyester embroidery thread. Um, just your basic thread from off of Amazon. And it was like a perfect match, dead on, technically. So... I used this thread and I swear to you every single last one of these hats frayed horribly the the thread the thread just ate up it wouldn't stay together even trying to thread the needle you cut your thread and you get a good sharp point on your thread to put through the hole of the needle this one would split and the thread would go like that and one of the hats that I worked on, which I end up having, ended up having to replace, which I had a replacement, thank God. Uh, but as you see, it ended up, I broke two titanium needles stitching this hat. And no, it wasn't completely the fault of the thread, but the thread didn't help. And the stitching of it wasn't as good. So, saying all of that to say, not to bash, thread bash people or thread bash a brand because this really isn't a brand uh, but I will say if you do end up having issues while doing your embroidery one of the problems very well could be the thread if you're constantly having thread breaks because as I mentioned with that one hat I broke two titanium needles and the very first needle was brand new uh, so I had no issues with needles I had stitched the first six hats, no issues. So now here I am stitching these yellow hats and all of a sudden I'm having issues. And the only change was the thread. It's a different brand. Why am I having issues? So keep that in mind when you are doing embroidery and while doing embroidery, if you're fine all along and then now all of a sudden you change one thing and now there's issues that's one of the things that i've been trying to implement to the folks who call for help whenever they are having a problem with their equipment it boils down to uh eliminating what the problem could be so you know it's not the needle i just changed the needle and it's a brand new needle and it's incorrectly i double check that it's not the needle okay so check that off the list Next down the list is your thread. Is this a different thread? Is it the same thread? If it's the same thread, and possibly is not the problem. But before you rule out the thread, check the thread path. Make sure that the thread is threaded the way it's supposed to be based on the manual because that can cause a problem as well. Uh, that was another problem I had. I didn't realize one of my threads kept breaking and kept breaking and kept breaking and I changed the needle everything was fine and it was threaded on the wrong channel 
and I never noticed it until I just got really frustrated, walked away from it, took a few breaths, did something else, and then came back and was like, oh, I didn't even see that. So do process of elimination. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Do process of elimination to try and find what the culprit could or could not be um, before threatening to throw equipment out of the window because I get that email quite a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this thing out the window. No, don't don't throw it out the window. It's it's acting up for a reason. So the question was that I posed on the outset is does it work? Does cheap embroidery thread work? Well Unfortunately, the answer to that question is it depends, okay? So one of the things I have learned is my 4x4 single needle embroidery machine can eat any kind of thread. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have a problem. Now, it, it acts a little flaky with metallic thread, but for the most part, cheap thread, expensive thread, doesn't matter. She stitches and she's going to stitch what she's going to stitch. Um... The six needle pretty much is the same way, which is ironic because the six needle doesn't like, um, oh man, what is the name of this thread? Sulky. Six needle does not like sulky thread. The 15 needle loves sulky thread, loves Madeira. Um, six needle loves Madeira. Um, but the 15 needle doesn't like cheap thread. <laughs> so it's, a lot of it is going to depend on your equipment and what you're running most in most instances if you have a multi-needle machine you really should be shooting to feed your machine the larger king cones which are usually about 5,000 meters worth of thread and more or, or not and more but you know that's pretty much the size because if you go with these smaller spools the smaller spools are going to run out really quickly and you'll be sad because you'll be changing thread a lot. So the larger cones are pretty much your better choice for doing embroidery projects with the multi-needle machine. But the smaller babies, your 5x7s, your 4x4s, um, most of your single needle home machines, yes, you can use the smaller spools. Um, but try it out. You know, that's the cool thing of... Um, the cool thing with your equipment you have time you just sit there play with it test it out on different types of materials and see what gives you problems but one thing's for certain learn to master threading your bobbins keeping your bobbins clean and the bobbin casings um, because with your bobbin casings there's this little area here where the thread comes out of a lot of times right under that clip it gets jammed up with thread so what I've learned is if you clean that out you'll be surprised the gunkity gunk that comes out of it and you'll realize that some of your stitching from it, if it's not stitching as smoothly or beautifully it could very well be that the bobbin has gotten gunked up so for instance, here's the channel right here that I was talking about. You get you like a business card thickness piece and you slide it under there and then you bring it right up in where that thread comes out and you see how that's lifting up some? Usually there's threads hiding down in there. And this one is brand new so there weren't going to be any threads or gunk hiding down in there. But just run that through one time should be sufficient and clean that out if you've been running your machine and running your machine like those of us who have been running these masks it doesn't take long for these things to gunk up with that cotton fabric uh, fiber so definitely check that out um, anyone have the brother NQ 1600 and do you find these machines are picky with thread if they are picky with thread find you a thread that works and stick with it now that's one thing I will definitely suggest um, and some of the more affordable, as I mentioned to the live last week, in finding places to get supplies, Metro EMB has excellent prices. Give them a shot. Their thread has been working beautifully on both machines. Um, no thread break issues at all. So give them a shot. And they are actually quite affordable um, so that you can 
you know, find something that your machine will like without breaking the bank. Because I know Sulky can be quite pricey. Um, and who is this? This is, where did I see it? Um, Ma Maria was mentioning Isocord and Sulky. She has no problems with that. And that's great. So if you find a thread that you love, go for it. If you're just starting and you're trying to find something that's affordable, definitely check out Metro EMB and give them a shot. And the price you, is an excellent, excellent price. Um, Maria says two dealers in here in Augusta, Georgia, have told me not to use the brother thread from Amazon. They say that it gets stuck in the tension disc and can cause damage in the machine. Um, I haven't heard, I haven't had that issue um, but I don't use the brother thread regularly from Amazon. I only used it a couple of times. Um, but the thread that I've used from Amazon up there in the top was that value pack of thread. Um, and it did not have brother on it. It just said that it was generic thread, but definitely keep an eye on your embroidery equipment while you're stitching, keep it clean and as you get used to cleaning it out on a regular basis, you'll learn what threads cause more lint and buildup and gunk in your machines than, say, a different brand. You really want to pay attention to your embroidery equipment. And the reason why I say that is usually folks who are into cars and love their cars, they stay on top of the maintenance and they know, hey, I, I ain't had an oil change and it's time for the oil or coming up on time i need to get the oil changed i need to get to the car wash i need to get it vacuumed out my car needs this my car needs that you know so your same thought process really needs to be just very similar with your embroidery equipment because that's a lot of money in equipment and you don't want to damage it because you weren't taking the time to keep it oiled or keep it loop well in the case of the 15 needle we have to lubricate it we have to oil it the six needle is supposed to be oiled daily as well um based on the manual the manual tells you to oil it now the single needle machines don't say that you should oil those equipments not in the manual however my maintenance person showed me how to maintain my equipment so that I wouldn't have to call him as frequently um, to save some money and I haven't had issues out of my equipment since so <laughs> um but that's something to keep in mind boom Chila says where does one get actual brother thread for the brother machines we can't seem to find any anywhere if I'm not mistaken brother sells the thread on their websites uh, website so you may want to check there um, and your dealer told you to use pre-wound bobbins on your embroidery machines. And I totally agree with that because the pre-wound bobbins save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, a lot of aggravation from not having a bobbin unwind properly. And that can cause issues while stitching as well, actually, if a bobbin isn't wound correctly. Um, so definitely check that out. Uh, just by being yo, I keep getting bird's nest. What could be the problem? Bird nesting um, could be any number of things, unfortunately. So again, you have to look at your process of elimination. I usually suggest, have you changed your needle lately? Think about that. If you haven't, try changing your needle. If you still get a bird nesting problem, check your thread path. Make sure that the path of the thread is clear. Nothing is getting tangled, getting caught, watch the embroidery as it's being done, as it's starting. So when the machine is starting up, does it seem to that the thread is getting caught or it's not feeding off the top of the machine properly? What's going on there? Um, also, check your bobbin. Clean your bobbin area out. Don't know what machine you may have, but you definitely want to um, take the time to look down where your bobbin goes. So if you have the drop-in bobbin, you can pull that that uh, cover off the top and look down in there. See if you see thread buildup, lint buildup, all of that stuff definitely can contribute to your thread just not stitching properly. And eventually it will cause bird nesting and, and 
problems with your having a nice clean stitch out so there's a lot unfortunately that when it comes to diagnosing a problem you really have to pay attention to your babies you really do you want to get used to what it sounds like like i can be in the other room and hear when the bobbin runs out before the machine even stops because i'll be sitting there doing something and i'm like up oh, the bobbin's about to run out and then all of a sudden the machine stops and it gives an error and my husband's like how did you know and like, i can hear it there's a you can hear the sound difference in the stitching because it, it all of it has tension and all of it works together so if something is off you can hear the difference in the stitch before it actually stops so you know learn your babies learn how they stitch you know and pay attention to them and eventually they'll become you'll become one <laughs> i don't know how else to you know really explain that but you'll get used to it and then you'll learn your common things that cause problems more often right and yes it is more difficult now i will say that when you have different brands of equipment like i have two different brands of equipment and three different types of machines so you have to learn what makes what tick but one thing's for certain each and every last one of those machines if you don't thread the bobbin right if the bobbin is in backwards meaning the the actual bobbin itself like for instance the pre-wound bobbins that i use are magnetic i love that because i don't have to sit and figure out which way is the right way to put it in now that's a good thing and a bad thing because it makes me lazy and i forget um like if i have to pre-wind a bobbin for myself because i want the same color on the bottom i have to pull pick up one of these and be like okay what what way is this coming off and how to okay so that's how you know but with the magnetic i know exactly that they, that goes to the inside of the bobbin and i don't have to think that i love because as I mentioned, anything to make my job easier, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, but if you put this in backwards, your stitch out will act up every time. And then you're mad at it and trying to figure out why it's not working. It's not threaded properly. You have to have it threaded properly. Went through that with my dad. You know, he's, as I mentioned, um, sewing the mask now. And when he first started, I was like, you know, pay attention to the equipment and he was stitching he called and he was like something's wrong because it's knocking i can hear it knocking as it's stitching and i'm like well let me come take a look at it so i go look at it i look at how it's threaded i re-thread it redo the bobbin and start stitching and it doesn't knock at all and he was like what did you do and i'm like i, I don't really don't didn't notice that something was wrong but obviously it must have been the way something was threaded because it's not knocking anymore and it, he was <laughs> That thing was funny now that I think about it. But it's really cool when you learn your equipment and get it working correctly. But um, that's the one thing I do absolutely love about that red line. Uh, when something happens to my machine, um, if it's acting up or whatever the case may be, they go deep and into detail to teach you what to do to maintain your equipment. They have videos on it in detail. Um, and I don't have downtime waiting on, you know, a service technician to either come get the machine or me take it to the machine and it'd be gone. I don't have to worry about any of that unless something absolutely major goes wrong. But even then, um, I'm pretty sure the way I treat that machine is not going to have any issues anytime soon. <laughs> so, but it's definitely good to know how to do light service work to your own equipment. Alrighty, what size thread is good when first starting out so you don't have to um, constantly buy more thread on a single needle machine? Hold on, y'all. Let me shut my door because it's nighttime and the nighttime bunnies are starting to fly. Um, so the size thread you want to buy to keep from constantly um buying more thread honestly on a single needle machine you can easily do good with the 2500 meter um spool of thread or sorry not 25 1500 um so all of these spools if i'm not mistaken are 1500 uh, meters no this one is a thousand but 
even still these size spools last unless you're using black or white both of those tend to use up a lot faster which you know that makes sense because those are you know pretty common colors but your basic colors your reds your blacks your blues stuff like that you may want to keep an extra spool of that but you are fine with your basic thousand meter spool now what i would not suggest that you purchase is the smaller spools that are i don't even know how much thread is even on this so like these little spools are 250 yards or 225 meters these little spools are a joke if you're doing any form of any type of semi-serious embroidery these are a joke they're not it's not worth your time um unless you're doing your occasional projects or like for instance um this fluorescent would be something that you wouldn't use that often so you get a smaller spool of that that's understandable definitely understandable but when you are dealing with you know doing projects regularly you know try and aim for your larger size now this isn't the largest because the largest you're looking at 5,000 or they're called like a king cone in a lot of instances but the 1500 spool or a thousand spool is good all right you're welcome you're welcome let me make sure I didn't miss Metro Pro is on sale for 129 for the small cone so they have a sale on their pro thread um, I actually don't use the pro let me make sure I'm saying that right before I mess up I'm using it's another name for their thread that they sent me a few to try it it's called glide okay so the Metro Pro yes I do use Metro Pro but the glide is their high level quality thread so yeah, their mini spools are a thousand meters. Those are fine for embroidery supplies. Have you been doing embroidery for years? Or is there <laughs> is there hope for us gaining the level of knowledge you have in a short period of time? Treacy, you'll be surprised to know that um, I have been doing embroidery for four years only. It's not been a very long time. Um, and the reason why I'm putting that out there like that, which is no secret, I've been saying that throughout the years in my videos. But what my thing was when I first started doing embroidery about four years ago with my little 4x4 machine, um, there wasn't anybody out there that was telling me how to use my 4x4 machine. There wasn't anybody out there willing to let me know where I could go get thread without spending a fortune um, what things I needed to start out with uh, for my machine there wasn't anyone walking me through the steps of threading the machine or learning how to hoop with my little 4x4 hoops there wasn't anybody willing to do that without a huge price tag and that had me very disconcerted um and it made me quite intimidated when it came to actually doing embroidery and trying to be good at it but it also spurred something in me that made it a challenge to learn the embroidery to the best of the ability that I could without kicking out a million fulfillion dollars and letting other people know the mistakes that I made along the way so that you wouldn't have to make the same mistakes that's where my fuel and my love for what I do came into play and why I started the channel because there were um, a couple of elderly ladies whom I befriended and they were trying to learn embroidery and they were trying to learn sew it pro 
and I started the channel so that they would be able to go somewhere and actually watch a video and learn how to do it, you know, because over the phone was rough. It was like, okay, so if you go here, do you see this on your computer screen? Yeah, I see it. And I was like, okay, so if you, you see that button there, yeah, I see it. Okay, well, right beside that button is this button and that's what it looks like, but I don't see it. And I'm like, but it's, it's right there beside it. You do see this button. Yeah, I see that. Okay, well, right beside it is this button. I don't see it. And I'm like, mm, there has to be a way for me to show what this button is and where to go to click it. Because I was like, if I can't do video conference with her, um, Patricia, that's going to be coming up within the next, that's going to depend. Actually, I was going to say the next week, but that depends. Um, but there had to be a way for me to show her because video calling, I didn't have FaceTime. She didn't have iPhone either. So it really didn't matter. And trying to do video calling back then wasn't the easiest. So even though it was just four years ago, but it was still pretty difficult. And I just, I said, no, we got to do. So I made a YouTube video and I said, Hey, why don't you go watch this video? And she got it. She was, Oh, you know, and was very happy. She loved it. Everything worked out. Then she asked another question. I made another video, so on and so forth. And the rest is history. Um, to the point to where she doesn't even call me anymore. <laughs> she, she stopped calling me like three months into making those videos. She just didn't even need me anymore because she was able to figure it out. So that's what in answering your question, you know, as far as a level of knowledge, I still have a lot more learning to do. Um, there's a lot of areas of embroidery that I haven't even delved in because embroidery is so vast, um, in the different things that you can do. But what I will say is what I have delved into and what I have learned, I've screwed up enough to where I know what in the world I'm doing <laughs> and I know how to tell you not to do it because I've screwed up before as well. So that's what, um the story is behind doing that miss treacy and one thing i will definitely say is if i can learn it anybody can learn it because i want to be sure that i try and teach as clearly as i possibly can so that anyone can follow along and learn you know if they have patience because i talk a lot <laughs> so other than that you can learn as well all right so one other thing I want to touch on, it's already 10 o'clock um, and we definitely um, covered, and thank you, Ardeen, love, love, love your videos, learn so much from you and the metallic threads. Thank you so much. Yeah, the metallic threads are my favorite. I actually love metallic thread. <laughs> um, there was no way to store the loose threads. Yes. Okay, Kimberly. Yeah, storing the loose threads does suck. Um but you can get pony ties you know the ponytail holders from dollar tree um especially if you can find the ones that are a little bit bigger those tend to work um oh dorothy gaston just said it so yeah that definitely can work to hold the threads uh so i will get to these questions in a moment but hi christy from ontario canada welcome and you're welcome. <laughs> so there are those of you in here who have been here a very long time. But over the past well over a year, we have been trying to put together our custom craft crews. And many of you have requested um, classes, one-on-one, -on -one, things like that all throughout this time. Well, my solution to that was to not only allow us a place to get together and have fun and go on this cruise and meet each other in person and cut up and have a good time, but also schedule classes on board so that we can learn a lot of these fundamental things with embroidery and sublimation and rhinestones and software that would get you ahead in the embroidery game. As Miss Tracy is saying, learning something you know, quickly, but clearly so that you can put it into practice and move forward successfully. Well, um, 
let's fast forward to January 2020 and it's time to put your final deposit, not your final deposit, but the main deposit down for your cabins and whatnot and enter player B COVID-19 who has since docked our ship pretty much and even if by some miraculous chance they opened up the entire company uh, company current country by may 18th which is the date that we were supposed to set sail i still would not feel comfortable setting foot on a ship with a bunch of folks i just would so that being said what we decided to do because quite a few of you did elect to sign up for classes is we're still going to have those classes However, we're going to do it the safe way and we're having a virtual cruise and I've made announcement of this many times before um, and saying that I was going to open up the classes so that you guys can do it. Well, there was a delay in opening up the classes for a multitude of reasons. Number one, I needed to make sure that those instructors who were lined up to teach the classes are still going to be available to teach the classes. We have a couple of instructors who are not. Um, but saying all that to say the classes are still on my concern at this point <laughs> is we were supposed to set sail on the 18th and those classes were every day from the 18th to the 21st some people may have taken out from work to go on this cruise so i'm going to be sending out a poll so to speak and would really love to have your feedback. So for those of you who have enrolled in those classes or are interested in enrolling in those classes, um, matter of fact, if you're interested in enrolling, let me put this in here. Okay, so in the chat, I just put the link to the Custom Craft Cruise website um, where I have put the classes back up live tickets are now available again but what I'm asking you now isn't to get tickets to the classes just yet what I would like to have you do is if you are interested in enrolling in our classes that are coming up please subscribe to that newsletter so that I will have your email address all right so if you purchase tickets to the class, I have your email address and that's great. So I will be reaching out to you definitely. But if you're interested and you're not enrolled in the classes yet, please subscribe to that newsletter because I want to know, are you going to be available during the day, during the week of that week, the 18th through the 21st. Because if you guys, as a vast majority, will not be available, then we need to reschedule those classes. That's why I'm asking. Uh, because I, the classes, when we do these, the classes are going to be live, all right? And it's going to be fun. The reason why I'm saying that is because the other part to this and I'm going to put that in the newsletter as well, is we are going to do these classes either through Zoom or through Skype, okay? So it's going to be video. And you will be allowed to join in via video. There will be a whole thing set up so that you will do, everybody will know what they're supposed to do, know how to do it, know how to ask questions, know how to, you know, be on video and all of that cool stuff. But if you don't know how to use that type software just yet to take the class, then we need to give you time to learn how to do that. And I show you how to do all that. So I said a mouthful just now. I know I apologize. So to sum it up pretty much right now is if you're not already signed up for classes, click the link in the chat and you want to sign up. Click the link in the chat or if you're interested and send your email address to the subscription, to the email subscribe list so that I can send you more information and get your feedback. And we're running short on time. Today's the third. So that gives us 15 days from the 18th, okay? 
in a nutshell, I need to know, are you going to be available during the day, the week of the 18th through the 21st during the day for these live classes? We may still be quarantined at home, but then there are a lot of states that are opening up and sending people back to work. So that being the case, we may move it to around the 1st of June on the weekend so that more people can be in and be live because this is a live event. This is going to be live. I don't want to record a class. That's not fun. We weren't going to be pre-recorded on the cruise. It was going to be live. You were going to be able to ask me questions live and I answer them, see your expressions, see your face, the whole nine. That's how it was going to be on the cruise. So that's how we're going to do it on our virtual cruise. All right. So if you're interested in the classes, they are up and you can enroll. But I would much rather you let me know when you will be available. If you're not going to be available during the week, the majority of you, then we are going to reschedule those classes. All right. So hope I didn't put anybody to sleep. <laughs> Do you have any questions about those classes, about um, anything? Zoom has had several security breaches, but there's a way to avoid that and we will be utilizing that for our class it wants me to report you when i clicked on it well i want to report you tell them report me <laughs> tell them they they don't know who they messing with they reporting me for something are you talking about on custom craft cruise or are you talking about the chat is wanting you to report me for putting maybe because i didn't do this hold on Maybe because I didn't put the WWW in front of it. I don't know. So Crafty said, had my bags packed. Ma'am, I had sponsors lined up. Instructors lined up. Folks bought tickets to cabins. I had my balcony cabin. I was going to be cute. Only thing I didn't do was buy the bikini yet. And I was looking. Trying to figure out what I was going to get. I was going to have fun. And it, it just really made me sad. Um, especially when they said, if you have pre-existing health conditions, certain ages, under doctor's care, a hard no, you're not going on any of our ships, whether you want to or not. I was, my feelings was hurt. It really was. Um, no, ma'am, Sheila Cushenberry, I did not because the link was too long. So I'm going to have to put it in the, I'm going to have to put it in the, oh, what, the link isn't live? Okay, I'll check it here in a sec. Um, I'm going to have to put it in the group. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so I don't know why that link isn't live. So let's copy and paste and see if we can't do that. See if this works. Yes, Maria, that is correct. Do the RSVP. That is, see if that, there we go. That's a live link. Um, do RSVP so that I can contact you and get your feedback. I want everyone, for the most part, everyone's feedback so that I can know what route to take. All right. Because I don't want to, I don't want to do the class during the week if not very many of the folks who pay for the class are going to be able to attend when the vast majority can attend on the weekend. That's the thing. That's the thing because I want to see all your lovely faces. I want to hear all your beautiful voices. Um, I want to have this interaction as a group. That's, that's the goal for each one of the instructors. Um, I just saw a question asking about what classes are going to be available so i have um there's going to be the cutters class where we will do a vinyl project the other thing but we'll get into that as soon as i get your feedback for everyone that has classes and they've registered for these classes you will have a package mailed to you you will have a package coming in the mail all right, so this package is going to be based 
on number one thanking you for even being bothered with the custom craft cruise it was my first and it was thanks to corona a complete failure <laughs> well not a complete failure but it was a failure um which is okay i learned a lot so in that instance it was not a failure i, I did learn a lot and i'm definitely appreciative of that it was an experience i will never forget um but you will be mailed a thank you gift first and foremost then the second thing is based on what class you've enrolled in you will get like with the cutters class vinyl will come to you so that you will have vinyl to work with as a craft along um soap making for the taking the instructor that is teaching that class still wants to teach that class she wants to send you your materials to do that class so as far as i know that class is still a go i uh in brilliance stitch artist is a software program i will be double checking with her to ensure that she's going to still want to do her class um cricket crafting we're gonna have fun with the cricket and i'm hoping i will have a guest in there with us all right so that's possibly going to be a huge thing but we got a cricket crafting class so art all right so you've heard me talk about so what pro all the time well so art is for those who want to get into digitizing and can't afford the multi-million dollar digitizing software options that are out there you know you can start out 75 dollars with so art so art is available on the babiesbooty.com for purchase it is a digitizing software program and it does work stephanie has been phenomenal in digitizing with so art she's digitized some beautiful things so she has a youtube channel on it but she's going to be doing a special class with so art digitizing so that's another class then we also have Jay Black, who is going to be teaching business savvy crafters. All right, so that's gonna be coming up um, to teach you business projects, uh, how to manage your crafting business and ways to be ahead uh, in the game with that. Um, then of course, no cruise would be, no class, no uh, teaching instruction would be complete without Sew It Pro. There will be a Sew It Pro class um, to get you more acclimated to Sew Up Pro and being able to move fluidly throughout Sew Up Pro to achieve the many different common elements to embroidery editing that I can think of is going to be taught in that class. All right. So the other class that we did have at one point in time was screen printing, um, but we're not going to be doing that because, of course, you can't screen print. Um, you can't screen print on that so meanwhile if you want to find out more just rsvp you can actually maria just rsvp to one um and well actually you can go ahead and buy the class i didn't see that so if you do rsvp if you wanted to go ahead and sign up for the class you can you can just um purchase a ticket but keep in mind the time will probably change okay because I'm just, I'm really nervous about, even though my class was from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., so that class very well could stay the same. But those classes during the day is, is has me a little nervous um, on who all will be able to attend. So, um, Tanya says, you're going to miss the classes because you're having major surgery Wednesday. Oh, no. Well, I hope you recover very quickly, Tanja. Thank you also for being a YouTube Hoop Group member. Um, now I will say this for those who have bought classes, you may not be able to join live, but I, these classes will be recorded and we will have them where you can access them later to get refresher, uh, courses or to rewatch something funny or something that may have happened memorable in the class. Um, so definitely you know keep that in mind the classes will be available for those who have paid for access to the classes all right you upgraded to a brother pr 1050x look at you 10 needles do you have it is it there with you now miss tanja girly please let me know when it click on the rsvp it says the class is full 
which let me look and see which class that would be because none of the classes are going should be full because I was supposed to change the tickets to all of them <laughs> so that there wouldn't be any issues let me double check I because I, at one point I closed out the classes and ended them because I wasn't sure how we were going to be able to whether we were even going to be able to cruise or not so I closed out the classes um, no. so let me nope that one shouldn't be I'll probably have to go back through with these and double check but because it's gonna take me a minute oh this one no That one should be fine. I gotta go through each one and take a look. I apologize. Let me double check these, you guys, because I want to make sure. Well, let like the one for in brilliance. That one may not be available until I know for sure. Um, she will be available that one is open and shouldn't have any issues let's check this one. Oh, okay so let's try that one all right so that one wasn't open so that one is open now because I did confirm with her and let me see if I confirmed here pretty sure I did yep that one is open and then let's check this one and this one is open as well so unless it sold out within the last 20 minutes which I doubt all of the tickets should be available and each one should be open and I will double check again to be 100% sure um, after the show tonight so if you have any issues and brilliance is full yes that's because I need to confirm with her before I open that class back up so art should be open now try it again it depends boom chilla on what class it is um, just erase small lettering while watching the live Lila I'm trying to tell you that thing is the best thing that's ever happened to embroidery ever aside from mighty hoops maybe <laughs> that Peggy stitch eraser is I just I cannot sing its praises enough and they don't pay me to say that I didn't get they they don't I, I paid for mine just like everybody else I love my Peggy Stitch Eraser. Absolutely love it. So I'm glad you got it, Lila. Um, but at any rate, the price of the classes, it depends on the class. If you're getting materials sent to you, like the vinyl class, you're actually getting vinyl and stuff like that. It's a little more than your basic, like the Sew Up Pro class. You'll get an ebook that will line up everything that we're going to go through in the class. So that's not like a actual something that you're going to get so that class is a little bit less all right so they range from 24 i think to 40 i think last time i checked but they are definitely going to be live she says it's here and i love it well um tanya we need to ring for your 10 needles ma'am because that's a big upgrade <laughs> Congratulations for your baby. <laughs> Congratulations, ma'am. That's a big one. Y'all have fun. And I hope things go well with your surgery. Don't stay down too long because them 10 needles are going to be waiting. They going to be waiting on you. So until then, do we have any questions, whether it be about the cruise, whether it be about um, the thread? whether it be about embroidery whether it be about zoom what do we need to have asked answered 
and I'm scrolling back up really quick because I talk a lot and don't get to see the chat right away and my assistant isn't here tonight to go over the chat with me good night Marge Campbell good night good night Tear Jazz one my first time ever online line I'm just starting an embroidery business need some tips in pricing products pricing is definitely something that most newcomers to the market are concerned with because you don't want to overprice and then don't get customers I promise you though it's worse to underprice and then you find out that you're working and you're not getting paid what your worth is and you're working and working and working and up late and dealing with thread breaks and difficult machines and something going wrong and having to order special supplies for this specific order and blah 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 and then next thing you know you're just not happy doing the embroidery you're not happy in having a business doing embroidery so definitely look at you know try and check what your competition is charging meaning brick and mortar embroidery shops see if you can find a couple in your area find out what their base rate is you know some of them charge you know a dollar per stitch I'm sorry a dollar per thousand stitches some of them have a base you know like you cannot come to me to do any embroidery unless you have forty dollars worth of stuff for me to embroider meaning whatever you normally charge will add up to forty dollars then you'll turn on your machine and you'll get to work because then it's worth your time I on the other hand if somebody comes to me with one item and they want to embroider it that's cool but I do have a minimum on how much per item I'm going to charge to embroider. So for you, that could be $20. For this person, it could be $8. For this person, it could be $10. A lot of that depends on what you want your minimum to be per item. So even if that means they're coming just to get a one letter monogram about yay big, it's still gonna be $20, whether it's one monogram or your minimum $20, which would be 20,000 stitches on an item you know if you do a dollar per thousand so the pricing is kind of eh, but there is video I do have a couple of videos out there on pricing uh, but you definitely want to check and see what the folks around you are charging so that you'll get a good idea of um, how much to charge for your embroidery uh, Andrea I will I will get in touch with her and make sure that she's going to um, host that class. She was very interested in doing it last time I talked to her, which was recently, I think in February. So I'm pretty sure she's still going to do it, but I just need, I, I have to double check. And if the time slot changes because people can't do it during, because I think her class was during the day, then we may have to change and I need to make sure she's still available. Egypt Quilts 1, what's the name class? what name of class and price I just came in so this is for our uh, virtual cruise we were supposed to take a literal cruise this month uh, on the 18th which coronavirus had a whole live another plan for our cruise so instead of just canceling our cruises uh, cruise classes rather we're going to continue to do our classes but we're going to do them virtual and there will they will be live um, and if you go to there's a link in the chat and I'll uh, post it again um, if you want to sign up for the classes it's custom craft cruise and you can um, look at the lineup of classes there I don't know okay so if when you google embroidery near me what pulls up there should be some businesses that pull up for um, people that offer embroidery near you. Just give them a call. Hey, um, do you do embroidery? Oh, you do. So I wanted to get a hat monogram. How do you charge? You know, what's your? Do you have a base price or how do you charge for my monogram on my hat? Oh, hats are twenty dollars. Oh, okay. Um, what if I want to get a um, pillow? Not a pillow. What was I gonna say? What's something else common people get? Oh, what if I want to get a vest um, done with a 
monogram on it or you know you see what i'm saying just try and think of some things that you would be interested in doing in your embroidery studio and see what the prices they're offering so that you'll know and they may say oh well it depends on the amount of stitches in the design oh really what do you mean so if it's thirty thousand stitches then your cost will be thirty dollars you know you see what i'm saying so they'll let you know usually usually they'll let you know how to break the price down some people will be like well you'll just have to bring it in and we'll talk about it when you get in here you know something like that uh, but a lot of that depends um i'm essential but i take the day off if i can learn how to digitize i know that's right <laughs> well we'll definitely let you know if that comes about i have got these flipping moths and stuff and it's driving me insane uh, yes i will post the link to the mask in the hoop group The So What Pro demo allow you to create a pattern like kids applique number and name. It does. But the thing with that, Christina, is you have to, you, you can't like create it from scratch. So So What Pro is an embroidery editor. So what that means is you will use So What Pro to take existing embroidery designs and edit them so if you're going to like you said an applique for a kid's applique number and name so say chris little chris is turning three and you want a number three and you want his name chris christopher so you would actually have to go on something like etsy or whatever and find an applique number three and then you would find a font somewhere for embroidery like I recommend Jolson's you can go to Jolson's and download their applique lettering and then import all of that into so it pro merge it together create your own design that way and then you'll yes you can use that and you can do that in so it pro demo however if you're going to um, want to make your own that's digitizing meaning you don't want to buy any existing designs you want to take a picture and create an embroidery design from a picture that's digitizing you will need so art for that okay so hopefully that made sense um but yes so what pro i love so what pro so what pro was my bestest friend when i started doing embroidery and finally found out about it because all the other programs out there were like 300 400 and i'm like darn i didn't pay but 300 for the machine itself so for me to have to pay 300 for the software too is a hot full mess you know but so a pro came to the rescue 65 bucks and i haven't looked back that program has done everything i've needed to do for editing and then some other than digitizing so yes Yes, 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 yes. Thinking it could be a side hustle, but with other stuff. So you were thinking of the business class. Business class is good, even if you're not, you know, trying to legit be business. She's very good in helping you prioritize what you need to do and not do uh, financially, actually. Best place to sell your topaz unfortunately would be probably good evening bad bread um the best place would probably be offer up facebook marketplace something like that because even if you went back to the dealer like at a joann's or whatever they're not going to give you full price what their thing is they would want you Maria, I know the that class is going to say that it's full for right now till I confirm with her that she'll be able to continue to that she's still on board to teach the class even though we're changing it to live. Okay, so I need to confirm that with the teacher before I sell anything. I mean, I would I would hate to sell you tickets to her class 
and then I call her and she's like, you know what? I don't want to do this live class. I just, I just don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. And now I'm having to get in touch with you and say, oh, she's not going to do it. I need to figure out how to give you your money back. You know, that, that's a bunch of something that, you know, will be unnecessary if I can find out for sure and then go ahead and say, hey, that class is open now. But between, she has young kids too. So let me, give me till Wednesday, Thursday. Give me till Thursday to give her time to decide what she's going to do and get back in touch with me um, before we make that class go live. And if you have RSVP or if you've signed up for any of the other classes or if you've um, signed up for the newsletter, you will know when that class goes live because I'm also looking to add a whole nother class, but I need to reconfirm with that instructor first as well. We discussed it, but I need to tap back into her and say, hey, you still thinking about doing that class? And if so, we're going to add a whole nother class, which I'm really excited about. Um, hopefully she'll still be able to do it. So um, I need to figure a way to organize my designs and fonts. My desktop is a mess. I can't find anything. PJ Coppage. Scooby-Doo is absolutely correct. That's the way I did mine. I got confused. It looked like they were selling a cruise. I got cold feet. I was. This was a cruise. Egypt quilts. Uh, it's okay, Angelia Baker. Welcome. Um, this was a legitimate cruise. We were all going on. Um, it was going to set sail for the Bahamas May 18th aboard Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, and come back that was Monday and come back on a Friday it was only a four night cruise um, I was super excited and then coronavirus said no just jumped in is a brother PE 800 a good place to start to add to screen printing yes it is bad Brad very much so now keep in mind though you're limited to write at about five by seven area for embroidery. So you'll be embroidering, you know, little things here and there, like, I don't know, um, monogram a shirt or something like that. But ultimately you may want to do a multi-needle machine, but that's on down the road after you've made a little bit of money and see, because that's why I suggest those smaller machines, the, the 5x7 embroidery machines, because it allows you to decide if you like embroidery or not, if it fits your business niche or not. Because if it doesn't fit, then it's a smaller machine, easier to sell. You don't have to worry about thousands being tied up or anything like that. But if you get into it and you're like, hey, this is working, I do a whole lot of embroidery, I think we need to upgrade and it's been making money then then jump into the multi-needle and invest in the larger machines um hey time you how are you welcome thank you for joining us um boom chilla you think it'll i'll be safe to wait till the sixth rsb deal can we rsvp and pay before the class begin you can rsvp um i don't think it will fill up before then i don't think it will Somebody asked the question. Oh, I got no, 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 no. That's what I was looking at. But that's not off. The cruise is off because it. Now you are talking about the cruise being off, right? I want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. That the cruise is canceled. As far as me being on that cruise and teaching the classes and being a whole part of the custom craft cruise that has been canceled i made that call i called the um cruise broker cruise person who was putting it all together when carnival told me in letter form that because i'm diabetic and under doctor's care and high risk for corona that I cannot sail on their ships in the discussion. So I'm pretty sure 
all the folks that signed up to go on the cruise and enjoy that time with me and with all of us, you know, would be a little bit sad if, if they go on the cruise and the whole purpose was to take classes and stuff and, and I'm not there and doing it. So I just canceled it. Now, if a person has bought tickets for the cruise and the country opens up and May 18th, Carnival says, we're still cruising. You can still come and join this cruise and go to the Bahamas. Have fun for me. Drink a, a, you know, rum. What, Bahama Mama? Do a Bahama Mama for me. Make it virgin, though, because I, I don't want to cause nobody no problems. Do a Bahama Mama for me. And a rum runner without the rum, virgin. And I would be grateful. But I'm not going to be on that cruise ship. Not going to be on the cruise ship. And Scooby-Doo, not Scooby-Doo, because you're helping. PJ, I'm pretty sure I have a video. It's an older video about two years ago. Pretty sure I have a video on explaining exactly what Scooby-Doo is saying. I'm pretty sure I do. To show you how to move several files instead of doing like one at a time. Magnetic hoops for the brother of PE770 would be on Amazon is the last place I've seen them. Whether they're still available right now, I don't know. Because of everything being sold out and not available and all that jazz, I don't know that they're available or not. But if they are, just put magnetic embroidery hoops, PE770, and it should pop up. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Thread Nanny. I think I deferred my cruise till November. Hope they cruise then. I hope so too. I thought about deferring it, but I, I oh, I see nothing about classes, just the contact travel aid. Okay, so if you're on customcraftcruise.com, all right, so on the main page. If you scroll down there, it says we set sail on May 18, 2020, and I need to put a big red canceled over the front of that, and I'll probably do that tonight. Uh, but right up under that, it says ready to cruise. Click here. Don't click there. Down at the bottom, it says class lineup information. Click here below that. So that's where you want to click the class lineup information, or if you're on the desktop up at the top, there's uh, class registration. You can click that. And if you go to class registration, it will take you to where you can RSVP. And when you click RSVP and scroll down, it will, you know, show you where about the event. So, you know, whatever the name of the ticket is, the price of the ticket, you click how many tickets you want and then pay for the tickets if you so choose to do so now. But again, keep in mind that even if we, um, even though we're selling the tickets based on a specific date, that date may change. I need to make sure that you guys can make it to these classes. Because I don't want you to have to register for a class you're not going to be able to make it to. Alright? So that's how you would find that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, are you live, Katie? Yes, I am. fabric is so hard to find i know i know yeah that that's the thing uh unfortunately boom chilla through the years i was obsessed with fabric on clearance for some strange reason and i had totes of fabric so this was right up my alley i have a ton of fabric and i've cut it all up for the most part, me and I, my mother, my wonderful, beautiful, outstanding God's gift to this earth who loves me. And I'm her one and only child. Loved me enough to sit there and cut up the majority of that fabric for me into eight by nine squares with a rotary cutter and my cutting mat that I let her borrow. Um, and now she's even still cutting up fabric for my father who has decided to make masks as well. Um, but I had so much fabric, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. And I'm still finding fabric. As a matter of fact, I was going through a bin just yesterday looking for something for someone. And it was like, oh my God, 
here is more fabric are you serious right now and i just it's, it's sad it's really sad how much fabric i had and that's just cotton that's just cotton just over the fall in the fall i sold a ton of fleece fabric extra fleece fabric that i had sitting around um and still have fabric left <laughs> i still have fabric not fleece but and i have a little itty bitty bit of fleece but i still had a ton of cotton and i still have upholstery type fabric um yeah it was bad it was it was bad but now the masks are eating that fabric up like it's nothing and i am loving every minute of it because i needed to get rid of that fabric i heard that walmart is closing out the fabric sections in the store they will be a fool to do that they really would because right now that's the only part of the walmart store other than lysol that is completely empty at all times is the fabric especially the cotton all that fabric is gone every bit of it yeah it's too hot for flannel do i have to have a cricket for the vinyl class because of, no you don't no you do not because the stephanie is joining me with that class and she does the scan and cut so we're going to be teaching that together Tracy says you're hilarious you ordered virgin drinks and made up a song <laughs> who needs a cruise when we can't get you live like this i mean i thought it would be more fun i thought it was going i mean i know we was gonna have fun because i was gonna cut all the way up i ain't lying to you i was looking forward to it maybe that was the lord telling me i didn't need to show out and so you know i didn't need to go on that cruise but because they showed enough told me no the crew carnival was like if you got this you are not coming on our ships and i was like well darn it ain't that serious is it actually it was that serious so i'm not mad here in the states there are a few areas where the virus is on the rise washington dc and florida i know and that's why i'm like you can't anyway Yep, yep, yep. I have totes of fabric from clearance too, Katie says. I, I know it wasn't just me. I know it wasn't, but I was bad, you know. And it was one of those instances where it's like all this time I was stacking up just for this moment. Just for this moment. And I'm not ashamed, even though I need to be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. It was a lot. So, Tim. <clears throat> excuse me 1047 we need to start wrapping up egypt says walmart went to pre-cuts yes they have the walmarts here have no fabric departments they have redesigned the stores that would suck i found a lot of fabric i had in my stash y'all hope everyone is staying safe out there eve i finally got my 12 needle machine i haven't used it yet though lakeisha monique girl lakeisha monique you get the purple bell <laughs> 12 needles. Yes! Holler! <laughs> Congratulations, girl. That's what's up. 12 needles is fun. You're going to have a lot of fun. Definitely post pictures of your projects. We look forward to it and congratulations. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Sheila Cushionberry says we rely on Walmart for sewing supplies needed at the last minute. That's why I think some of the stores in like the small, more rural areas, they're going to keep the fabric because like in charlotte most of the stores got away from the cutting tables but they still had pre-cut fabric on the thingies so i think that's the route they're gonna go but they definitely don't need to get rid of fabric they do not they do not um was gonna make bags i've made tea cozies i mean you have to find your niche niche you have to find it how you say get cracking on that machine <laughs> right don't let it sit too long because then you won't get on it broad cloth broad cloth is another yeah you can use that for mass too but still everything is like you know it's running out if it's cotton you can't find it 
thread from Long Creek Mills. You tell me that Long Creek Mills right now is shut down due to the virus. Um, I will check with them this week to see if they're open or going to reopen. I hope so because they still had a whole lot of thread left. A lot of thread left. But when I tell you they still didn't have the sewing machine spools of white, they had tons of black, but no white. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you're welcome. I do love Long Creek Meals. I want to join the vinyl class. It is... Well, vinyl is going to be partially in that cricket class. Unless you talk... Uh, the vinyl class um, is going to be... Regular vinyl. Not t-shirt vinyl. So... Um, I mean, we can cover that too. But the vinyl that's going to be sent out is going to be an actual project with marine vinyl. So, like, um, it's not going to be hand sanitizer holders, but, you know, something like that. Is there a way to program magnetic hoops on the red line? Um, yes. From what I understand, all you have to do is enter in the parameters uh, for that size. But, I would definitely um, check with... Stephanie, not Stephanie, what is his name? I would check with Redline to see if they have that information like pre-loaded somewhere or something, you know what I'm saying, so, to help you get that in. But then again, I think it's based on your machine. So the same way you set the parameters for your regular hoops is the same way you would set the parameters for the magnetic hoops. I didn't do it because I'm lazy. I'm not going to lie to you on that. In the least, I mean, I try not to lie anyway, but I'm lazy. I didn't do it. Do you use Sew Up Pro? Yes, ma'am. I sure do. The only embroidery editing program I use Sew Up Pro, first and foremost. Willa Allen, I would hate for Walmart to make that mistake again. Years ago, they got rid of the craft department and ended up bringing it back. We're crafters. Hello. If there's anybody out there who doesn't have self-control in buying stuff, crafters. So you might want to leave the crafting department alone, Walmart, when Dollar Tree brings in a crafting department specifically for crafters. They have what's called Crafter's Corner now at Dollar Tree awesome stuff actually by the way not that i know and have busted any budgets over there as of yet but <clears throat> they do have a crafter's corner so walmart really does not need to get rid of that they really do not can you tell when did you upgrade your embroidery machine um it was two years ago and no, 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 no. Going on three years ago, July. Come this July, it'll be three years ago that I went from. So I started out with one, I, with a PE 500 four by four embroidery machine. And then ended up with so much business that I decided to add a second four by four embroidery machine, probably six months later six to six to ten months later i added a second four by four embroidery machine wait a minute let me jump to a year a year later i added a four by four second four by four embroidery machine and because i found such a good deal on that 4x4 on Craigslist. It wasn't Craigslist. It was Offer Up, I think. On one of those secondhand sites, I bought another one. I looked for another one and found another one brand new in the box for like $200. Um, so I added a third one. So I had three 4x4 machines going at one time. And then I dare say six months after that is when Blessing arrived from the brother dealer here in Charlotte. We went and purchased that. And then... Th last year? When did you come? You came 
So Grateful came early November or September, October or late October. So that would be two years after Blessing came Grateful. Two years. So maybe we need to make a petition. Ha! <laughs> they don't care for me. They ain't going to listen to us. I know, Tanya, I was cheering for Dollar Tree too because that was amazing. I mean, they have the, the uh, what are you, X-Acto knives now, craft little nip scissors. They have glass, little glass vials, beads, um, uh, foil, quilling, quilt, whatever you call it, um, etching, wood. All of this stuff. All of this stuff for crafted. I mean, it is a awesome little department, too. And they, like, really thought this thing through. Somebody thought this thing through and pitched the idea to Dollar Tree. Whoever that was, we need to shake their hand. That's, that's who we need to really talk to and be like, look, thank you. Somebody need to stand up for us. And it was a really good idea. It was a really good idea. You hurt my feelings. We have self-control. We leave some behind for others. It depends, ma'am. <laughs> like Dorothy Gaston say, I go with my limit every time. Look, yeah, I do leave some behind for others when I run out of money. That's when I leave some for others and don't have a choice. Lots of revenue in the crafting area. They need to take heed and keep the craft departments going. I'm trying to tell y'all. See, people, I'm just, I'm not, a, I'm nowhere near profit material but I see trends in things and when I see a trend and call it use with I'm gonna tell y'all something funny because it's time for me to get off of here and I don't want to talk y'all's head off but I'm gonna tell you something funny January pretty sure it was January I don't know why but matter of fact we'll back up to December November Dece December I was looking at videos on YouTube about face masks, how to make your own face mask. I don't know why. I can't remember. I think because I saw the thing, the, the thing in China and people were wearing the masks and I was like, it would be cool if you could make your own face mask. I remember that. I remember looking at the videos. If you, could, you don't believe me, if there was a way you could check my YouTube history, you would see that it's there back in, nope, December. January, I saw that thing was starting to spread. And I say, no, no, no. We fence to go and get some supplies because I'm not playing no games. I didn't get toilet paper, but I did go get Lysol and I got Clorox wipes. Went to Sam's Club, biggest thing. Matter of fact, that was really what put the nail in the coffin because when I went to Sam's Club and I found those big things of, it was like a five pack of big containers of Clorox wipes, but couldn't find any Lysol. It's like, oh no, we finna go get Lysol from somewhere. And I went to Walmart somewhere. I can't remember where it was. And they actually had Lysol. So I bought like four or five cans of Lysol. And I came home with all that stuff. My kids laughed at me. And they was like, why is you buying all that stuff? He 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 he. And I say he he nothing. Um, excuse me, but when you catch the EBGBs and you laughing at me when I'm going to be safe with my Clorox and my Lysol and I started spraying stuff down in the house and say you will be quarantined in the garage and I'm going to be safe in the house with my sprays and stuff and ironically that ended up completely wrong I'm not in the house because they're essential workers but anyway they laughed at me and that thing was a trip but was I not right you can't find Lysol to save anybody's life right now it's like Lysol is nowhere uh, but I do have a couple of cans left. I do because I bought some early and I bought a lot. But at any rate, so when I'm telling Walmart they need to not get rid of the fabric department. They do not need to get rid of the fabric department. At all, actually. None of that crafting stuff. Sewing, crafting, if anything should tell them something now, they should see now. With their shelves stripped bare of even sewing machines, that should let you know, no, this is not a department we want to give you. It might have been a little bit slow, but it wasn't slow enough to where you should get rid of it. It wasn't. So, I'm in Virginia and our Hobby Lobby is closed. Man, as soon as they reopen back up, I bet you they're going to have the fabric that we wanted. 
So what are your thoughts on a Janome 4 needle for $1,000 used? Yay or nay? I don't really want to tell everyone, so our Hobby Lobby will be open in the morning. If it ain't in Charlotte or nearby, it ain't doing me no good to know that. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me hush. I'm not buying no more fabric. I've determined I'm not going to do it. I refuse. Um... Use Janome. COVID saved me money. Yeah, in a lot of ways it did. The thing with used equipment is, it's a chance that you're taking. Um, because there's no warranty at all. At least if you buy it new from Walmart and it's jacked up, you can take it back. Or send it back in to brother with your receipt. Buying it used, you don't have that protection. Will that come back to bite you in the butt? you might get a perfectly good brand new machine and it works great and you don't have any issues i didn't have any issues out of my used machines none whatsoever would i buy used machine again if the price is right yes i would i definitely would uh, and if i had the money um but that's a chance that you're taking do research on that equipment look at what the support is for it like are there youtube channels on it to show how to use it are there uh, do they have a facebook group where people are willing to walk you through how to do certain things or whatever can you buy extra parts for it like hoops and supplies for it and whatnot check all of that stuff up check all of that stuff out rather and see what feedback you get what feel you get from it and if it is affordable and if it makes sense from your research, then it's still a chance because they could be selling it because they couldn't get it to work for whatever reason. It could be something wrong with it, but it may not be anything wrong with it. So I don't know what to tell you i see mo bickham is in here stop in for a moment son is in the er jumped on here to say i didn't forget about you he isn't here and wife can't go in waiting to hear no one is going to be able to go into the hospital with him i apologize and prayers are with my family there because that is tough that is really, really tough. Um, Hobby Lobby Warehouse was closed. Could not get their supplies, but I heard they will open back up. What? They need to hurry up and do that. Um, Say, so what about a heat press? I missed something about a heat press. Hold on. great because i don't have enough business for a really top of the line don't don't do top of the line just yet want the large magnetic hoop i use the a hoop to embroider my prayer shawl but it's hard to get good tension in the hoop okay yeah that magnetic hoop is amazing absolutely love it Lila. mighty hoops are the bee's knees and if you are able to spring for the hoop master it will definitely help you it will definitely help um not sure what happened with somebody's heat press but walmart that didn't have masks on a lot of people here still don't wear masks either i'm not gonna i mean i don't really wear the mask all the time either which is the most re that's what one of my customers asked me today she was like where is your mask and i'm like oh. I really don't wear the mask. I make them, but I don't wear them. Um, it depends. Walmart, I usually wear a mask, usually, because it's just too many people. But on a day-to-day, -day, like running in a convenience store or going to go pick up food or something like that, I don't usually wear a mask. I'm sure I need to, but I don't. Um, they buy boats in our area. We have dress shops. Oh, cool. What do you want? Leslie Ram says, what do you want? Were you, who were you asking? What do they want? 
Good night, Tanya. Girly. Thank you for being essential and please be careful if I did not miss you. Where is a good place online to buy good fabric? Joanne's is so expensive. Shook, um... At this point, unfortunately, every place online is going to be expensive because I've noticed the price of a lot of he's unable to stand or walk on his own. What the world? Okay, I'll be calling you after the show if I can. Um, please. Um, Suge, everywhere is expensive. Everywhere is going to be expensive. Um, because they're marking up fabric. Fabric is going, the price of fabric has gone up. So, not sure where to tell you. Fabric.com usually is well supplied, but I, I really, at this point, because fabric is flying off the shelves everywhere, I really don't know where to tell you to find fabric. Thinking of buying a Janome single needle. What are your thoughts on Janome? Janome, um, from what I understand, is a decent machine. Um, I don't have one. I've never used one. Uh, so I can't say I absolutely love it when I've never used it. I'm a huge uh, fan of doing research. Like, go for instance, go on Amazon and look at the reviews. Go on Google and look at the reviews. I always, I'm always i a sucker for reviews. And I, I read through reviews. Because you're going to have some people out there that says, This machine sucks. It's the worst machine ever. Don't ever buy anything from them. When I called them, they hung up on me. Well, that doesn't mean the machine sucks. That just means their customer service sucks. So you're giving this machine one star when it doesn't deserve it. So I do read through the re reviews. I don't just look at stars. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to be sure that a person who is reviewing and check your negative reviews, not necessarily the positive, look at the negative reviews. And that is what will give you an idea of, you know what, that machine only stitches two stitches a minute oh my god no i can't deal with that so that you know what i'm saying so you can see what others are presenting as the negatives and it gives you a better idea of what you may not want to be bothered with um but take most of the reviews read them for the information but take it with a grain of salt as well because a lot of machine errors are user errors a lot of machine errors are user errors. Please remember that. I don't care what machine you have. Because I've heard negative reviews about the red line. And I'm trying to figure out how they had that problem. Because I ain't had that problem. And, you know, I don't want to say I know what I'm doing. But I took the time to learn what to do. So if that person isn't didn't take that same time to learn what to do... And they don't know how to do it, so they're mad at the machine because it's not doing what they want it to do, but you didn't take the time to learn. And so now you're giving it a negative review, okay? So read your negative reviews for the machine on the Janome. See if there's something on there that kind of strikes you that, that you're not in harm, like, mm -mm, I can't deal with that. Then make your decision from there. Yo, local Joanne kicked out Husqvarna. OMG, Renee. That's crazy. I wonder if they're going to do that nationwide. For the classes, all we have to is RSVP. For right now, yes. Eventually, you, I mean, you'll have to get the tickets for it. But the reason why I'm saying RSVP is because I'm going to send out information. Okay, so to recap, since it's after 11 now, uh, I have a little bit of extra time. So that's why I'm still here. But to recap, one of the biggest things we talked about tonight is we are still on for the Custom Craft Cruise classes for our virtual cruise. First and foremost, our virtual cruise classes will be live. Okay, so this is not live like I am right now. 
this is where we're on Zoom and each one of you will log in with either your cell phone or your computer and your camera so that I can see your beautiful, beautiful faces and hear your wonderful, lovely voices. And you can ask questions. We can hear each other, see each other, and interact with each other, okay? You will be able to see my computer screen, um, see the class notes, the camera. I'll be able to turn it and show the equipment while we're working with it so that you can follow along with your equipment and such at home, all right? This is a whole live legit webinar class where all of you will be present, um, Lord willing. And it will be recorded so that you can watch it later. But that's only for the people who purchased the class to begin with. All right. So my thing is I need to confirm with each one of the people who are interested in those classes or have already signed up for the classes if they are going to be available during the day, during the week. Or if I need to move all of the classes to a weekend, early June sometime, so that we can get everybody acclimated to Zoom, get everybody figuring out what weekend day works better for them. What You know what I'm saying? Not what weekend day, but whether the weekend is better or during the week is better. All right. So that's why I'm saying RSVP for now. But if you're okay, no matter when we decide to do the class, you can go ahead and buy the tickets because the tickets are limited. But um, the RSVP is just to be sure that you get information and I get your feedback before we finalize the date and the time of each class. That's what the RSVP is for. Okay. So if I have your email address, great. If you do buy your tickets for the class, please, Lord, please, please, Lord, please, please, Lord. Do they hear me, Lord? Do they hear me? Please, Lord, if you buy the tickets, please make sure I have your correct mailing address. Please, I am begging you, <laughs> please make sure I got your right address. Um, make sure PayPal, if you're paying by PayPal, make sure PayPal has your right mailing address so that I can send you your custom craft cruise class packets. Okay. And your supplies. Each instructor will have their own supplies that need to come to you. And I need to make sure that you can get that stuff. Okay. Please don't make it hard for us <laughs> and have mail coming back and making me real sad. Okay. Please make sure I have your mailing address. If you're buying tickets, if you've bought tickets, or if you're about to buy tickets, when you buy your tickets, please make sure I have your correct mailing address, please. Because when we get in the class and everybody else has their vinyl and stuff, and you're like, well, I didn't get my vinyl. Did you give me your address? Because I will have tracking on it. I don't play those games, <laughs> okay? Because I'm going to say, it says here delivered. And this is the address that it went to because this is the address that I had on file. Okay. Please, y'all, if you love me, please make sure I got your address. Please. Please. It just makes me sad. I already struggle getting stuff out in the mail. I ain't gonna I mean it's just that's a fact of who I am. Um, but please make sure I have your right address. Good night, Tracy. So you guys, um, have a good night for you all. You can record your Zoom. Right, that is correct. Now, as I mentioned, it is going to be, Heat Press Nation has a lot of 15 by 15 presses. Reviews, reviews, CMA, reviews. Leslie Ram says, I want to mail tickets. Let me know about mailing tickets. Um, but you guys have a great night for those of you who are leaving now. Um, definitely, um, Sending major, major, major well wishes um, to Miss Beckham, 61, and your family. 
You have me concerned. Um, and everyone else in here, have a great night. And if you have any questions whatsoever, any concerns, please just email me. Shoot me an email. As you see down here, thebabiesbooty.com. You also can just do thebabiesbooty at gmail.com. And it does come to me and I do check my email. Um, meanwhile, I wish you all well. I do pray that you all stay very safe in these uncertain times. And um, definitely want to be sure that you guys are um, staying busy, as busy as you possibly can, in addition to staying safe. Because, as Miss Parker says, the anxiety can be overwhelming. But I promise you, if you take the time to focus on not only the beautiful things that we do have amongst us this group is awesome everybody's super nice no worries mom no worries mom just um text me even though i'm gonna try and get up with you here shortly uh but you guys this is this is a great thing we have going on we have an awesome little community here we all love crafting. We all love what we do, right? Thank you, Unga Bunga. I definitely appreciate that. Um, so you guys just delve into your crafts. It's what you love. And what I'm learning is the more that I stay involved in the crafting side of it and what I love to do, there's less anxiety, less I have to stress about, less I have to worry about. Yes, my stresses are still there. But it's a lot easier to deal with anxieties of the all the negatives that's out there. If I've had time to breathe, work my crafts for myself, find that inner peace, then I can be okay with everything else. Okay? Yeah, no, no, no. We don't we don't do drama. That's one thing I will not tolerate at all at all in our website just it's all positive if you don't have anything positive to say maybe you're having a bad day or maybe something you know i don't know whatever reason you may not feel positive that's okay because we're all gonna have bad days here and there just try not to comment just be like you know what it ain't worth it click off and go somewhere else because i really don't want to have to ban folks because you're having a bad day and you want to spread it to everybody else because <laughs> we don't tolerate that at all we're all going to be positive and nice and good because there's enough trash and negative and frustration and aggravation out there okay so when you come into the group we want to be positive and happy and have a really good time so thank you all very much for joining me for a little bit of a long night um again if you need anything ask a question whatever the case may be just shoot me an email i'm here um please be patient if i don't get right back to you as you can tell putting classes together cranking out masks doing business orders and being a wife and a mother and a grandmother at all in one fail swoop is very busy and time consuming so um family comes first and all else falls into place thereafter so i definitely try to get back in touch with you as soon as possible so but ultimately i appreciate each and every last one of you for joining me this evening i would not have this channel if not for you so i'm definitely very grateful so until the next time we see you next week i want you to um keep positive share your projects and the things that you've been working on and i look forward to seeing you all again live next week all right so thanks, have a great night, and you guys stay safe and happy embroidering. <laughs> Bye.